Hello everyone. Been a little while since I've done a video. Had a little break in the day today for work. Stopping at uh, my church in New Britain here, St. Francis of Assisi, do a little prayer time. But before that, I just wanted to talk about what's been weighing in uh, on my heart a bit. And today, I wanted to do a review, not just on the uh, new Top Gun movie, Top Gun Maverick, but the original Top Gun movie that came out in 1986, because uh, I went to the movie on Sunday, it is now Wednesday, and I just can't get some of these scenes out of my head, and I'm making a lot of connections with my faith with not just the new movie, but with the original movie as well. So I wanted to delve into the parallels between the Catholic faith and with those movies. So spoiler alert, if you have not seen the movies yet for the new one, I'm gonna try to hold back on spoilers to give everybody a chance to see it. But I think everybody by now has seen a movie that's over 30 years old uh, with the original Top Gun. So it feels like that when uh, like Maverick's character, he, he's just this, this cocky guy, he's really smart, he's really good at what he does and it shows in the first movie and he gets sent out to Top Gun with his partner Goose because he's really good. And Top Gun is where the best Navy pilots go and they learn to become uh, aerial combat fighter. They need to know the art of combat, of aerial fighting if needed in an emergency situation. So he's going up against the best of the best when he gets to Top Gun. And it feels like that when we convert our faith and we start thinking that we know everything with it when we have that conversion and we're on fire with everything we act a lot like Maverick does of this whole uh, I am going to set the world on fire I'm really awesome and hey check this out like when Maverick and Goose initially get the Top Gun they take on uh, Jester in one of the best teens scenes of the movie Jester is one of the teachers that they have and uh, they say, well, how good are you, kid? How good are you? So they have a smaller jet fly after him and Goose, kind of a practice run of, if I get you on target, I'm going to let you know and uh, let you know if we, you would die in a real combat situation or not. So it's one of my favorite scenes of the movie, probably because of the song in the background, Mighty Wings is the name of that song. And uh, Jester saying to them, come on, kid, show me what you got. And he's saying, all right, Jester, let me give you a run for your money here. And that's what it feels like with us when we have that conversion experience. Like we can take on the whole world. It doesn't matter how good people are. And the parallel I have with that is when we are talking with uh, some of our Protestant brethren after we have our conversion experience and we're just listing off the Bible. Very, like they're, they're challenging us on knowing the Bible and we're able to start learning and we're able to quote scripture back to them. In a real life situation, they tend to back off and they get surprised with it. Like when Maverick and Goose are able to get Jester in that aerial combat area of in that practice, they beat him. They go below the hard deck though. It's kind of like, eh, they broke the rule that they were told, but they didn't really have a choice in the matter, but they were able to take him on and Jester's face at the end of it, you know, he's behind the mask, but you can see his eyes wide and he's just upset that he lost. He's like, all right, just uh, get your butts back up above the hard deck and uh, return to base immediately. And he just backed off on them. And that seems like our uh, Protestant brethren when we are having a conversation in real life with them. And YouTube comments and Facebook comments, it's a different story. They're always gonna come back at you and try to zing you back because you, you commented and I'm gonna zing you back with this comment and then we zing them back with our comment and it just kind of works out that way. But in real life, in my experience, they've backed off because they're pretty impressed. Like, oh my goodness, this person knows his Bible, just like uh, Jester does. The other parallel I like to draw from the original movie is when uh, you get humbled a little bit. You get knocked off your high horse when all of a sudden something just goes wrong in your life. When uh, Maverick and Goose are flying on their practice run and something goes wrong with the jet. Not Maverick's fault, not Goose's fault. It's just a malfunction. And we know what happens with Goose during the ejection sequence. And Maverick is just so decimated by it, that unexpected thing that happens in our life. And that's what happens in our life too. Uh, something unexpected happened, especially the loss of a loved one. And he just goes into this bit of a depression, that dark night of the soul is what I can compare that with when we lose somebody that we love or something bad happens, something goes unexpected. 
And you see Maverick in the movie, he has people trying to help him out. He goes up to his instructor, Viper, who's pretty much the best pilot in the world, and Viper's giving him advice and keeping him calm, and his love interest in the first movie, Charlie, is saying, I'm here for you, I'll help you with whatever, and he's just not hearing any of it. And we hear that sometimes as well, where it's just not going well for us. People are trying to help us, but we don't want to hear it. And eventually something's got to happen. And then the uh, Viper keeps telling the other teachers, get him back up in the air, get him back up in the air. He's too good at this. He's too good at this pilot thing. And we, we need him up there. So eventually he goes up there. We see what happens. He even has one of his enemies because we have even in the church, we have uh, some brethren, some, we have fraternal correction in our church uh, with members that we're friends with or whoever. And I see this more with, I can liken this to the traditional Catholics and the Novus, the Latin mass Catholics and the Novus Ordo Catholics where we agree on the same things. We're, we're, we're on the same team, but there are just some things that uh, annoy us about each other. And uh, we just went to a Latin mass, a high mass, our first one ever, my family and I, and it was, it was awesome. It was wonderful. I mean, it was about a half hour from our house. Uh, and the, the incense was awesome. The liturgy was awesome. The reverence was awesome. But we have our own church too. I mean, we like both masses. We like both uh, the traditional Latin Mass and the Reverend Novus Ordo Mass. I know that if you watch Taylor Marshall's channel, he likes putting down some crazy stuff that's been going on in other channels, like what they call in the nasty comments, the Novus Ordo land. They'll, they'll show some strange things that have been happening with bubbles and dances and I don't know. I've never experienced that stuff with in my experience during Mass in my 38 years on this planet, but I guess it is happening. But anyway, that goes along the lines of the parallel of Iceman and Maverick, where uh, Iceman and Maverick aren't getting along. They're they're more rivals. Iceman sees him as a threat. Maverick sees him as a threat. But there's fraternal correction with Iceman, which is why I like his character so much. When I was a kid and I saw the movie, you just didn't like him because he was against Maverick. But even after uh, Goose passes away in the accident... Iceman even goes up to Maverick and he says to him, look, I, look, I'm sorry about Goose. Everybody liked him. I'm sorry. And that's all he's able to say. And if you look at Maverick's face and his reaction after that, he kind of gives his face like, okay, wasn't expecting that. And they're still just not getting along. Iceman is trying to fraternally correct him saying that we're on the same team here, but you're in it for yourself. You can't leave your wingman. You have to this is what you have to do. You can't just go off like a loose cannon. Maverick doesn't like that, but after losing Goose and he gets back up in the air and he's getting back into it, um, he's able to have a great ending of the movie where he becomes Iceman's wingman and saves his life. And at the end, you see them come together as brothers, and I'm hoping we can see that someday with our uh, the Latin Mass Catholics and the Novus Ordo Catholics to just give each other a hug and say, you're, you're my wingman. We're, we're in this together and, um, I love you. And that's just a wonderful part of the movie that brings that these people who are on the same team, but rivals together. I don't want to say Latin mass Catholics and Novus Ordo Catholics are rivals. I never, ever want to say that. That's a, that's a bad parallel there, but you know what I mean with, we got along, we're together, we're on the same team. We believe in the same things. And in Maverick the other day, from what I saw, as I said, I'm going to keep the spoilers as low as I can with this movie. This was a movie that was as advertised. It was presented to me from everybody who saw it and what I read online of there's, it's just good storytelling. That's, that's all it is. If you like the first movie, you're going to love this movie. And there's no woke stuff in it, nothing contrary to our faith in it, um, it's just this wonderful thing. And by the way, let me go back to the first movie for a quick second here with Goose's character who passes away. He's a Christian. I never noticed that as a kid. He's wearing a cross at one point in the movie. He never says anything about it. His wife says something about going to church at one point. And then when Maverick is uh, taking the box of Goose's belongings to his wife, you actually see a set of rosary beads. So you have to assume that he was Catholic or at least Orthodox. Uh, so that was kind of cool with it. And 
you see the instinct we have when we lose a loved one too like Maverick doesn't say a darn thing about his faith in either movie but he does say in that last mission where he's getting really really scared of helping Iceman out during that dogfight battle with the other jets uh, he says like to get back into the swing of things he holds up Goose's dog tags and he says come on Goose talk to me talk to me and then he's able to get back into it after that after probably hearing Goose talk to him some way to build up his courage and that reminds us too we have an instinct built into us even when we lose loved ones we know that they're still with us they are they are part of that cloud of witnesses that Hebrews 12 1 tells us uh, just even though they're dead in body they're not dead in the soul and they are part of that cloud of witnesses which is why we ask for intercession of the saints and sometimes when we're being tempted with purity or something say come on blessed mother come on saint joseph talk to me here come on saint augustine talk to me here it just reminds me of what maverick was doing when he was talking to goose and that builds up our courage in it uh, when we talk to those loved ones that have gone before us it leads us to jesus it just gives us an instinct that they're still really here with us because god built a soul into us you know uh, but in the next movie it's basically the way i can say it is it's a movie that has redemption in it learning from mistakes in it courage in it it's all parallels with our faith i mean they are asked to go on a mission in this movie that just seems to be impossible they even say at one point in the movie it's going to take two miracles to complete this mission and talk about our catholic faith being filled with miracles we need miracles for our conversion because in repentance when we change an interchange of our heart it's going to take a miracle and it's going to take god to be able to do it for us and what they're asked to do in this mission is like it's so bad that you're probably not going to come home from it and it's going to physically distress you as well at these points where we have to you have to pull up the way you do this stuff doesn't get done and you even see the pilots in their training for this mission their bodies reacting to it when they're going up they just have a tough time breathing and they're actually getting knocked out at one point but we're there to help each other out as a team as a fraternity to save each other and maverick does that at one point he does something really clever to wake up his teammate and you see them waking up and you just see how the bodies are reaction under that time of stress and when we have conversion especially under time of addiction and we want to get over it and we want to repent of it our bodies have reactions to the way we're getting rid of the junk that's out of our bodies whether it was you know through watching pornography or being addicted to alcohol the body just goes off the wall but we will have our fraternity with us to pray for us and do these amazing things for us and we turn to our heavenly father to get through these temptations just like all of the saints before us have done in their conversion stories so it has story of forgiveness in the movie story of courage the story of teamwork it's just a lot of fraternity is what it feels like in the movie which is why i loved it so much along with the beautiful soundtrack catholic church has beautiful music uh the jets that they have in the movie just seeing what these things do the noises that they make and just i mean humans built these jets and you just see the things that they can do and it's, it feels like that with the church with us. You see the beauty of the church and what these things can do when the blessed sacrament is exposed on the altar and the holy water is being used to remind us of our baptisms. It's th Those are the parallels that I draw from it. And it's good, clean, I'm not going to say family fun. I mean, my seven-year-old seems to like some of the flying scenes in the movie of the first one. There's other stuff in the movie you don't need him seeing but the stuff uh, like for example there's a french kissing scene um in the initial movie i mean no nudity but it goes there and you see the the tongue action and it's like they didn't do that in the second movie we'll put it that way they they didn't need to it stayed focused in the second movie of just good storytelling and tom cruise i gotta give it to him the guy's a good actor i think he's a scientologist and boy it would be pretty cool if he uh came over to the catholic faith he'd have a lot of people following him and the guy's been acting for a long time and uh the, the guy's got it i i gotta give him that i mean since the movies reopened since the pandemic uh i've been to a few of them and top gun rivals some of the other movies that i've seen i mean we've seen sonic 2 with the family great family movie great themes with that movie as well and uh, it's, it's just it, it hit I mean when the movies are sticking with me and I'm able to put the parallels with it I figured that 
you know, it, it's a good movie. These movies are good movies for Catholics to see. I mean, a little bit of cussing in it, and during our conversion experience, from what I learned in my conversion experience, as a side effect to it, I rarely cuss anymore. But in times of great stress, like the pilots up in the air, that's when the cussing generally happens. Uh, we do the same thing when we're under great stress in our lives. We're, we're going to let some cusses out here and there. So um, just what's on my mind. All right. So it's been a while since I made a video. I figured that I would do that while that's weighing on my heart and on my mind. And I'm sure there's other stuff that I've forgotten as well. Just highly recommend uh, both movies. And if you can get to the theaters to see Top Gun Maverick, I really recommend it. It's uh, your your seat is shaking during the those jet flying scenes, and it's just it, it's very very powerful. It gives you goosebumps. It's one of those pleasures that God gives us in life to just kind of make the hairs on your arms stand on end. And uh, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I've seen some really, really wonderful comments. I really appreciate it, guys. It makes me want to keep going forward with this channel. I know my videos aren't the best quality. I don't edit, and eventually one day I might get around to it. Uh, but I do know that uh, we're on the road to 1,000. I Maybe I'll throw some movie reviews in here. Uh, we, My wife and I just saw Father Stew recently, and... It was a good movie. It was very good. Uh, usually my wife and I, we piecemeal a movie. Like um, after our kids go to bed, we'll watch a, when we're watching a movie, we'll watch one hour one night and one hour the next night before it gets too late. But my wife actually, when we got an hour into it and I was ready to turn it off and I said, you, we'll finish it tomorrow. And she goes, actually, no, I want to see what happens next. And we watched the whole movie in one sitting. It was very good. And I think I'm going to do a giveaway on that movie. If we hit a thousand subscribers, I do have a digital copy of the movie for anybody who has like a voodoo account or a digital apple account or whatever um, i'll probably do that as a giveaway we'll see what happens with that so i might do that when we hit that thousand one thousand subscriber mark so uh just pray for me and for my family my kids are coming to the age where uh, they're going to be first communion age coming up very soon and we're trying to do our best to teach them the faith right now and we'll see how it goes and see what else they get. I mean, uh, they know a lot more than I did when I was six and seven years old, but there's still a lot for them to learn, and they're in a church's boring phase right now, no matter what mass we go to, whether it's Latin mass or our Reverend Novus Ordo mass here. I uh, don't know. They're just kind of in that bored mode. They don't even want to read the holy stuff, but we keep on going. We keep on going. We keep on going. That's what's important, and every night, rosary before bed, and we're just kind of refreshing them right now on what these stories mean, uh, what our salvation is, and the joy that Jesus brings us. So just say a prayer for me and for my family, for patience for me as a dad, patience for my wife as a Catholic mom, and patient, patience for my kids as they're going to be growing up in a very secular, woke culture. So um, say some prayers for me, and uh, thank you again for taking the time out to watch the video. All right. Um, God bless. And I'm sorry if I'm looking up during the video. I'm just trying to concentrate and think of everything. And that's just, that. It, that is what it is, right? <laughs> so God bless and take it easy.